Let me ask you about the Bill Maher program because one thing that stood out to me, and it was pointed out by Chris Hayes on MSNBC earlier this week, is that mm -hmm. it was a bunch of guys sitting around the table, none of whom actually are Muslim. Uh, do you think that was a problem, that you all were discussing this topic without anyone there who could speak from their own personal experiences? Well, no, it was, you know, that was not, the, sh the purpose of the show was not to discuss Islam, that we sort of stumbled into this. I, I think we, we knew it was on the agenda, but... It, I you know, understand, but isn't this that even more broadly in media a problem, the, the lack of representation when we're talking about these topics like religion? No, the, the, the problem really is that people like Irshad and Majid Nawaz, who I mentioned, do not, there are not enough of these people, and, and, so and if I'm mistaken about that, then they, they, they don't have enough of a voice that even I'm in ignorance of, the, of their numbers. They are not represented in conversations like this enough. I mean, Irshad, but, but, you must but, be pretty but, but, tired but of being booked just yeah. to talk about extremism and not to talk about moderates, not to talk about reform. Certainly, uh, and, and I'm not surprised by that. I mean, you know, uh, bombings and beheadings are always sexier than good people doing and saying good things. But I want to get back to Sam's point that, you know, there, there may be more reformist Muslims in the world than are being given airtime and ink time. I think you're right, but, Sam. Irshad, there are. Can I just ask there you, are. But let Irshad, me just, but you let me just tell say, me what Sam, percentage, uh, allow tell me, me what percentage of Muslims. Uh, allow me just, to finish just, my point. I just want to know how many you think there are. Uh, we don't know. We don't know. And one of the reasons we don't know is precisely that they're not given the platforms to, you know, speak their minds. And this is why, Sam, I'm asking people like you. I'm sending you stories of Muslim reformists around the world and asking you to share them with your large constituency. This is how we're going to just not just transcend our own differences, but actually create a common front to defeat the kind of extremism that you and I fervently oppose. This is what I don't understand. You know, good folks like you, and you are, you are coming from an absolutely constructive place in my view, good folks like you will say that you want to help empower Muslim reformists, but then will almost exclusively focus on the jihadis and the extremists when you're in front of a TV camera or a radio microphone. I don't understand why you consistently wait, lapse into that you're mistake. Shot, wait. Reformists have to focus on the extremists and the jihadists and the Islamists as well. This is a, this is a but, common but project. But they're saying but we're here and we're speaking. Why aren't you I, listening? I, I'm ignored. That, that's why I'm talking to you, Irshad, and that's why I'm not talking to Reza Aslan. <laughs> it's, I, 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 I consider that this, this is a fundamental distinction. We need people who will honestly acknowledge yep. the problem. And this, this is why I'm doing a, a book with Majid Nawaz. And this well, is Sam, why I'm giving money on, to his organization. On, to your point, Sam, about these percentages, you said on the Bill Maher program that, that uh, jihadists and Islamists make up arguably 20% of Muslims in the world. But I, I can't find the data for that. Where, where does that come from? Well, well, well that's, that's quite conservative. And, and, and again, this but it's is, conservative you, you based have to on realize, what? Well, you, well, Pew results, Gallup polls, there's been a, there, there, there have been many, many polls done in Muslim countries. And, and if you look at these polls, you'll see that in many cases, the most extreme countries have not allowed the polling to, to take place. So the, the data already skewed in favor of a more benign picture. Well, that, we that's a fair point, but the same Pew polls that you're citing also show things like this. Let me read one line from it. This is from sure. 2013. In most countries where the survey asked Muslims about religious extremism, more than 75 percent say suicide bombing and other forms of violence against civilians is rarely or never justified. To me, that right. doesn't sound like uh, the, the sort of violent Islam that I hear you describing. Okay, well, you, you've cherry-picked one question, but, so, but just flip, flip it around. So 25% say that it is, it is sometimes or often justified. And when, but when you look, that's averaged over a, a bunch of countries. That's if you right. look at specific that's right. countries, there, there are percentages that are much higher. So but, then and, I guess we again, should be having have, a country-by-country country discussion and not a discussion about Islam. Well, no, but we can do that, but again, it, it's, it's misleading to focus on countries, as many people want to do, and, and it, it's much more relevant to focus on doctrines and the, the total number of subscribers to each of these doctrines. So if you ask a question like, do you think apostates should be killed? Do you think someone should be killed for leaving the religion, uh, whether joining another religion or becoming an atheist? That is, first of all, that is a... a a mainstream doctrine within Islam. There is no school of Islam that says, oh no, apostasy is fine. This is, this, where did you ever get that idea? Every, every school of jurisprudence in the Muslim world 
will say that apostasy is a killing offense. Now, a reformist like Irshad has to figure out how to change that. But, but, but Sam, if you, if you take you this narrow question, if you, may I just add vast that? numbers of Muslims believe this is a killing offense, and that and that's a that's why that's why Irshad's life is dangerous, and that's why the, the life of a, any Muslim atheist is dangerous in the way that uh, the, the 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 life of a Christian atheist or a Jewish atheist isn't. Irshad, well, do you feel that your life is dangerous? Used to be. Uh, I don't feel that much anymore, in part because I think things have radically changed, and they have in the trenches since 9-11. Not for everybody, but I can tell you not long ago, I did a major debate on Al Jazeera uh, in which I was uh, debating a conservative Muslim. Sure, I received hate mail afterwards, but I got a lot more love bombs from uh, a new generation of Muslims than I did hate mail, mm. and not a single death threat. Am I therefore That's saying right. that everything is rosy? Not at all, and please do not misunderstand me there. What I am saying is that when you consistently focus on the problem without shining a light, Sam, on where the hope is coming from, then that in turn misleads the general public into believing that there simply is no hope. And so people lapse into despair and then become even more angry and even more fearful. I think well, I will, I, you know, I, I'm happy to take your direction there, Irshad, and you, if you want to send me a blog roll that I should tweet about, I'm happy to do it. I think you're giving me more credit as a publisher of this kind of information than I deserve. But the other, the other thing that, that you, you notice about my focus is a result of the fact that so few people are calling a spade a spade on this issue. We have a president yep. who says ISIS has nothing to do with Islam. Right. We have obscurantists like Glenn Greenwald and Reza Aslan taking up immense bandwidth Right. Uh, and and lying about the 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 link between doctrine and and behavior, and then academics and journalists everywhere simply don't believe that anyone ever believes in paradise. I think this is all right. propaganda. They of think course, they're, they're it all is. they think jihadists are bluffing. My, it, my it, point. It's amazing to me that blowing yourself up is not uh, convincing as a rhetorical right. device that you actually have the courage of your conviction. Sam, I'm simply saying I agree with you 100 percent on that, and I'm simply saying that uh, rather than allow yourself to be distracted by the propagandists, how about taking back your message and shining a spotlight on reformists over and over again, not just once, not just mm. intermittently. The conversation will keep going online and here on TV. Sam Harris and Nirshad Mamji, thank you both for being here. Thank you. Thank you.